it's Newton that has convinced everybody that there should be a time independent from change. When Newton uh, uh, wrote the Principia and insisted on that, nobody believed him. Leibniz protested, everybody protested, complained. Uh, why? Because the ancient way of thinking about time, which goes back to Aristotle, that is the same until, until Descartes, mm. is that there's no time. There's just things changing, and time is just a way we use uh, to label uh, uh, some Sequences change. Sequences of events. Right. Yeah. So that's Aristotle's definition of time. Time is the measure of change. So what do we mean by time? Um, there's a sun that goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. So time is a counting of the days, it's a counting of change. Newton said, no, oh, no, wait a minute. It's easier to write physics <laughs> if we imagine that right, there's a right. time even when nothing happens. Yeah. So the real question is, when nothing happens, does time passes or not? Newton would say yes. I mean, nothing happens, but nevertheless, time goes. Aristotle, and I think modern physics, is saying no. There's nothing that happens when nothing happens. There's no time when nothing happens. Time is just a, a way of counting how things change. It becomes relevant when you want to write the fundamental theory of the world. Okay, sure. Do you write it sure. by saying, this is my t variable, right. which is the flowing of time, right. and then I write how things change in t, right. or... Which is the, cl the cl classic quantum mechanics. Which is the classical quantum mechanics. Or do you write by saying, these are the possible observables of the world, okay. and that's an equation that tells me how they're related to one another without any specific things called time. So it becomes crucial, this difference, when you want to write a physical theory.